Close your eyes. And be sensitive to your breath. Notice when you breathe in, where do you feel the breath? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? You can try a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice how that feels. If it feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. Make the breath shorter, or in short, out long, in long, out short. Fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. Ask a few questions about the breath. Experiment to see what feels best. As for any thoughts that are not related to the breath, you can let them go. If they can come into the mind, they can go out. You're going to learn a skill right now, which is how to stay with one thing, with a sense of ease, with a sense of well-being. Now this will require some thought, asking yourself what kind of breathing feels good right now, and then being on top of it. In other words, the needs of the body may change. So what feels good right now may not feel good in five minutes, in which case you can change the way you breathe again. Take an interest in how the breathing feels. And when it begins to feel good, try to spread your awareness to fill the whole body. So you're aware of the whole body breathing in, the whole body breathing out. Now the range of your awareness may have a tendency to shrink, especially on the out-breath. So keep your mind to yourself, whole body breathing in, whole body breathing out. And again, if any other thoughts come in, just let them go. If you find yourself following them, just drop them and you'll be right back. This is a skill we're working on right here. And part of the skill, as the Buddha said, is learn how to think the thoughts you want to think and not think the thoughts you don't want to think. So right now, the thoughts you want to think have to do with the breath, have to do with getting the mind to settle down. The things you don't want to think about or anything that would pull you away. When the Buddha states that as the purpose of the meditation, he goes ahead to talk about different ways of getting out of thoughts you don't want to think. Sometimes you just notice that you wander it off and you drop it. Other times you have to think about the drawbacks of the thoughts that have pulled you away. In other words, what bad consequences come from thinking those things. Or you can simply learn how to ignore the thoughts. If you notice there's any tension or tightness that goes with the thoughts, you can relax that. Or you can just tell yourself, I'm not going to think those thoughts, and just bear down on your mind. Those are different ways of not thinking thoughts you don't want to think. But what about thinking the thoughts you do want to think? This is an important part of the practice, too. Some people come to meditation hoping they can just stop thinking. They don't like their thoughts. They run over and away. But it's kind of like someone who gets drunk in order to escape thoughts. While you're drunk, the thoughts may go away, but then when you get sober, there they are waiting for you. So that's not the right approach. The right approach is to get on good terms with your thoughts. Make peace with your thinking. That phrase can mean two things. One is to get on good terms with your thoughts. Learn to use your thinking powers in a skillful way. And then making peace. In other words, use your thinking. Think in ways that will lead to peace. The Buddha has lots of instructions on how to think. Everybody runs to the meditation to stop thinking, but it's important to learn how to think. You're not going to learn how to stop thinking skillfully until you learn how to think skillfully. He says if you have trouble settling down, try thinking thoughts that are inspiring. They could think about the Buddha. Read up on the Buddha's life. Find some aspects of his character, some aspects of what he's done for other people that you find inspiring. 
or how he conducted his own practice. Focus on that. Remind yourself, this is what human beings can do. And here was a human being who did that. And his teachings are still alive. They're still here to practice. So the fact that you've encountered these teachings is a good sign. Make the most of them. And then you can think about what he actually said. What he said, what his disciples said. If you have trouble with thoughts about worries about the future or concerns about the past, what did the Buddha have to say about things like that? For example, if you realize that you've done something wrong in the past, he says, don't let yourself get tied up in thoughts of remorse. Realize that the mistake is something you can learn from. Everybody makes mistakes. The important thing is to learn how to make the best use of what you can learn from them. Recognize the mistake as a mistake. Resolve not to repeat it. And then think thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill for yourself, goodwill for others. Goodwill for yourself so that you don't beat yourself up over your mistake. Goodwill for others is to remind yourself that you don't want to harm anybody ever again. And what does it mean to harm people? It means to get them to do unskillful things. So you focus on those thoughts. That's for any thoughts that would keep berating you for what you've done in the past. Just tell yourself, these are not useful, this is not a helpful conversation. And learn how to argue with them. We're not here to run away from our thoughts. We have, we're here to learn to, to recognize which thoughts are skillful, which ones are not, and to use our skillful thoughts to counteract the unskillful ones. Or you can think in terms of karma in general, things that happen in life that you get upset about. You say, well, I must have done something in the past. It may have been a long time ago. This doesn't mean that because I'm experiencing something bad right now that I'm a bad person, but there were unskillful actions in my past. Those are the ones that are showing results right now. But that doesn't mean you don't have skillful actions in your past. The Buddha's image of karma is like a big field with lots of different seeds, and some of the seeds are sprouting right now, other seeds are just lying there dormant. So when good seeds are sprouting right now, don't get careless, because you may have some bad seeds. And if bad seeds are sprouting right now, don't get depressed, because you may have some good seeds. And you can certainly create good seeds right now by developing the right attitudes. This is how you use karma to think skillfully. All of the Buddhist teachings are meant to be used skillfully, to teach you how to think. You can think about your generosity, you can think about your virtue at times when you're feeling down on yourself. Remind yourself that you do have some goodness to you. So take joy in that fact and let that lift your spirits. So what you're doing here, you're not running away from your thinking. You're facing them, all your thoughts. And you learn how to face them skillfully so that the unskillful ones don't overwhelm you. And you can use your skillful thinking to counteract them. Otherwise, if you just keep trying to run away, you know the old saying, you can run but you can't hide. The thoughts will catch up with you at some point. So instead of running away from them, try to understand them. Where did these thoughts come from? You might be able to recognize that some thoughts come from this person and some thoughts come from that person. They may have meant you well, may they have not meant you well. But if it's an unskillful thought, no matter who put it into your head, You've got to say, no, I don't need to take that on. Learn to step back from your thoughts a bit. Watch them from the outside. That's how the Buddha got on the right path, dividing his thoughts into two sorts. Those that when you follow through with them would lead to skillful actions, and those that when you follow through with them would lead to unskillful actions. 
the unskillful ones, he would, as he said, beat back. And it doesn't mean just repressing them, it means arguing with them, trying to understand them, seeing where their logic is wrong. So they don't have so much power over you. As for skillful thoughts, you can think of them as much as you like until the mind is ready to settle down. So these are some ways in which the Buddha gives instructions on in how to think thoughts that you do want to think, how to make peace with your thoughts. You're good on terms with the thinking faculty in your mind. And you can use your thoughts to bring the mind back into concentration. So remind yourself, an important part of meditation is learning how to think. You look at the short teachings of the Ajans, we have collections. The short teachings of Ajahn Fuang, Ajahn Li, Ajahn Cha, Gi Nanayun. Sometimes those short teachings are the most effective ones to keep in mind. Because when unskillful thoughts come into the mind, you want a quick karate chop. Something that points right at the weak point in those thoughts, so you can clear them out of the way. And then have some space to get the mind to settle down. Because so remember, you've got the Buddha, you've got the Dhamma, you've got the Sangha on your side. They're here for you to learn from. So that you can't think the thoughts you want to think, and not think the thoughts you don't want to think. It's only then that you can find some peace.